Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a drink. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today I wanted to conclude a series looking at the 10 mechanics that receive substantial buffs on the Atlas support in 3.20. So with all of the blockable mechanics, they receive big buffs in 3.20. Delirium's no exception. And whilst Delirium was already one of the strongest mechanics on the passive tree, it got only small buffs, but it is still in a pretty good spot right now. Now one thing that's important to note is that essentially there are two different mechanics rolled into one with Delirium and the passive tree support that exists is somewhat split between these two mechanics. So there are some points that improve the mirror of Delirium, things like that which you seek and also Descent into Madness. These points will cause you to be more likely to get the Delirium mirror or for the Delirium mirror to be better when it appears. Then there are points that link to a different way of playing Delirium content and that is maps that have layers of Delirium applied to them. So nodes like Pathological cause your maps to have a chance to have layers of Delirium pre-applied to them. And additionally, there are various nodes that will cause you to be more likely to receive Delirium Orbs as drops from monsters and as drops when you collapse the Delirium Mirror in a map. Now there are some points that affect both Delirium Mirror encounters and Delirium Layer maps, for example Compulsive Hoarder, but many of the points are better on one of these strategies than the other and we'll mention that when we go through all of the different points that exist on the tree. Now Delirium requires a fair number of travel points to get to everything and it's generally in fairly awkward locations on the passive tree. It is however near a couple of things that synergize quite well with it. It's near the two Searing Exarch clusters and also near all of the Incursion clusters. These have phenomenal synergy together and they're definitely something I would consider running together with this mechanic. Additionally, you are close to Ritual, Einhardt and Blight, which it is somewhat solid with, but doesn't strongly synergize with, just a little bit. And it's also close to Heist and Metamorph, which Delirium has basically no synergy with. I would personally recommend pairing Delirium with Exarch, which has no additional travel, and Incursion, which only requires two additional points. And then also spending three additional points on picking up Einhar's Animal Companion node down here. The reason you want Einhar is that even when you are fully specced into Elva on the tree, you will not be able to sustain Elva missions in every single map that you run. And as a result, it's nice to have a fallback and Einhar does have some synergy with Delirium. Every time that you kill a red beast, the Delirium mirror will pause for a little while and you get a pretty big boost in your Delirium rewards layers at that point. So when you run out of Elva missions, what you can do then is run some Einhar missions and also run Bestiary Scarabs but also before you do that, remove all of your incursion investment on the tree and spec into bestiary just for that little period of time. Alternately though, you can run delirium in conjunction with a right side of the tree approach as well. This is gonna take more travel points, but if you do that, delirium works really well in conjunction with breach, abyss and legion. I personally don't like it very much with Jun or expedition, although some people will disagree with those. Now, Delirium mirror strategies absolutely do want you to block some of the content you're not specced into. For example, if you're not specced into Abyss, you'll be running past them when you're doing a Delirium mirror map. Harvest and Breach are a bit of an exception here, and Black Thumb and Dimensional Barrier are probably not worth taking, even if you're not specking into Breach or Harvest. The reason for not blocking these mechanics is that while you're fighting the monsters that are inside these encounters, the Delirium miss progress through the map will pause. Now one thing that's important about Delirium, it tends to be a multiplier for the value and power that you'll get out of Scarabs. This should be considered when pairing it with various other mechanics. Delirium also requires a very powerful character, more powerful than much of the rest of the game does, and ideally you want something that's fast moving. Especially for the Delirium Mirror, moving fast through maps matters a lot. And lastly, not all maps are created equal for Delirium. Long linear maps like Promenade and Strand are at their best, Complex layouts are bad, maps with mandatory loops like Atoll and Mesa and Foundry, these are bad as well. We'll discuss this in a bit more depth when we discuss the western wheel that controls the duration of Delirium Mirrors because there's a number of mechanics that are important to grasp there. Now one question that comes up a lot with Delirium is just how much does it scale monsters? At the end of 2021, a player did some very thorough testing on how Delirium scales monsters using a cunning tactic of measuring reflected damage that was suffered by players. They concluded that 100% Delirium led to 30% more monster damage, which matches things GGG have said in the past, and 96% monster damage reduction. I made a video on this at the time, as did plenty of others. However, their testing methodology was fundamentally wrong. Their testing method double dipped. What this means is that the damage was reduced twice because it was reflected damage, it's treated as being dealt by players twice, and as a result, the Delirium damage reduction was applying twice there. 
Later, very, very thorough testing has confirmed that 100% delirium is 80% damage reduction for monsters and 30% more damage dealt by monsters. And this testing indicates that smaller amounts of delirium scale linearly, so 40% delirium is 32% damage reduction, which is roughly equivalent to 50% more hit points on the monster, and a 12% more multiplier to monster damage. As well as this, delirium adds other dangers as well. It doesn't just scale up the stats of monsters, but delirium also causes the little red exploding balls to appear on the ground, as well as white balls that when you run over them, causes monsters to spawn and attack you immediately. So delirium definitely adds quite a lot of danger between these factors. Okay, so let's talk about the various clusters that are available on the tree. Firstly, we have the Southwest Delirium Mirror Chance. So this is a straightforward 22% flat chance to get a mirror of delirium in your maps. Every single strategy that's revolving around the Delirium Mirror wants this, unless the Kirak mod for Delirium is available. If the Kirak mod for Delirium is available in a given league, then you might find yourself in a situation where you commit to using that every single map, in which case you're not interested in the that which you see cluster. Note that these nodes are completely worthless if you are running maps that have layers of Delirium applied to them, because 20% Delirious and higher maps are ineligible to have the Mirror of Delirium appear in them. And this is why I pointed out there's a bit of a separation between the two types of engaging with Delirium content. You will want different points on the passive tree. That said, definitely take this if you are running a Delirium Mirror strategy and the Kirak mod is not available for Delirium, or alternately if you are not intending to use it on every single map. Now your total chance that you can get on the passive tree in order to have a Delirium Mirror spawn is 34%, plus the baseline which is believed to be 8% now. You can get 48% instead if you have Wandering Path, although in practice Wandering Path tends to be a mediocre choice when it comes to Delirium. Content blocks will help increase this further, and you will want to block content types that you're not interested in running. One more thing that's worth pointing out when it comes to getting the Mirror of Delirium on a map, and this is something else that competes with these nodes like that which you seek, is there is a Sextant mod that causes areas to have the Mirror of Delirium appear in them. There are also a number of other powerful Sextant mods that relate to Delirium, and the most powerful of them all is probably the Your Delirium bar fills up twice as fast. This one is incredibly powerful, and generally I would only recommend using this if you are running a very, very highly juiced Delirium strategy. If you're not running something that juiced, then I would suggest sealing that Sextant when you do get it, and selling it to someone that can use it more effectively than you can, because they will be willing to pay quite a lot for it. The second cluster to discuss is the Western Time Control Wheel. Everything on this cluster is good for Delirium Mirror strategies and is worthless for Delirium Layer strategies. So if you're running Delirious maps, you probably don't want to take this cluster. But this requires some elaboration on exactly how Delirium works in order to follow exactly what's going on. There are two duration components for Delirium. There is time until collapse begins, and then there is the speed of retraction of the mist. Now those of you who are my age might remember the popular car racing coin-op arcade games like Daytona USA and Sega Rally from the mid-90s, where the player started with a certain number of seconds, and the further that they progressed through the racetrack, the more additional bonus time they received. Delirium works a lot like that. The further away from the start of the map you get in general, the longer you will usually have. In this analogy, Delirium fog in your maps dissipates X% percent slower, is like increasing the amount of time that you get each time you pass through a checkpoint. And Delirium Fog in your maps lasts X additional seconds before dissipating, is like starting with a higher amount of initial time. Both of these stats help a lot, and the Singular Eternity node and all of the small nodes near it are worth taking unless your character is overwhelmingly more powerful than the content you're running, which for Delirium is fairly unlikely. And then after that, there is another stat in this wheel. Descend into Madness has Delirium in your maps increases 50% faster with distance from the mirror. Now, you can get 75% of this stat in total. If you have at least 70% of it, areas that would otherwise be regarded as 60% Delirious or higher, based on your distance from the Delirium mirror, will instead cap out at being 100% Delirious. Now in this wheel, there are two nodes that are weaker by far than the rest, and these are these three second additional time bonuses. These just have much worse numbers than everything else on this cluster, and as a result, I would suggest you don't take these points unless your character is just getting settled into Delirium. While you're learning Delirium, definitely keep these points, but then unspec them once you feel that you've got the basics down pat. And once you feel like your character is pretty powerful, you're just not going to need these, and really 3 seconds is just not good value for one point. On the flip side, these 8% slower ones, these do provide more in general, and as a result, I do recommend keeping these. 
Finally, if you're just getting started in Delirium, you're going to want to actually drop the two points that make things more difficult here. Descend into Madness is an excellent node, but it's actively bad until your character is very powerful. And likewise, Delirium difficulty here is one that you can skip as well. Skip these nodes early, but do skip them with a view to taking them later. They are very good nodes, they're just not necessarily very good nodes early on in progression. Next we have the West Norwest cluster that I term the Cradle cluster. This has Compulsive Hoarder and also has Delusions of Persecution. And then you have the sort of baby in the cradle on top. So the Compulsive Hoarder cluster includes an 8% chance to get three additional reward types on Delirium Encounters and a 4% chance to gain one additional reward type and you'll get multiple copies of that 4% chance. This is like a 38% chance for your map to provide you rewards as though it was 20% more delirious than it is. Now that's if you're running a delirium layer strategy. If you're running a delirium mirror strategy, it's a little bit worse than getting two additional reward tiers. But again, only 38% of the time. Now on a delirium mirror strategy, what this would mean is that instead of getting five jewelry, three currency and one armor rewards, you might receive five jewelry, three currency, one armor, and five weapons. If you were to get one of these procs, that's what an additional reward type will look like. If on the other hand, you are on a 20% delirious map, instead of receiving seven jewelry rewards, you might receive seven jewelry and seven currency. These nodes are at their absolute best if you are running a 20% delirious strategy. Then you'll find they are absolutely fantastic and probably the best nodes on your entire tree, or at least very close to it. If you're running something that's Delirium Mirror based, these nodes are adequate, you probably want to take them, but they're not anything extraordinary. And if you're running a 100% Delirious strategy or something closer to that, then you'll find that the relative boost is smaller, but they're still okay nodes. So next we have Delusions of Persecution. Now the power of this node is going to depend a lot upon the demand in your league for the specific cluster jewels that Delirium bosses can drop in maps. Now note that there are a number of unique cluster jewels, all of them are only boss drops from Delirium, but they come from different situations. The ones that drop in maps will be the small cluster jewels. This includes the extremely popular The Interrogation, as well as a number of other cluster jewels that are sometimes in high demand. These can definitely be very good. However, the unique medium cluster jewel Megalomaniac and the unique large cluster jewel Voices are exclusive to the Simulacrum. You will not get them from Delusions of Persecution. If you're in Solo Self Found and you need one of these items, these small cluster jewel uniques, then you need to spec Delusions of Persecution until you get it. It's just a massive multiplier to your chances of getting those specific uniques. On the flip side, if you're in SSF and you don't need any of these clusters, then this is a complete waste of points. The Simulacrum Splinters that you get here are just not enough to worry about. If you're in Trade League, you want to keep an eye on the prices of these small cluster jewels. At the time I'm recording this video in 3.20, these bosses in maps are not really worth killing. But on day three, it was a d very, very different matter when the interrogation unique cluster jewel was worth an entire mirror shard. Nowadays, that same cluster jewel is 50 chaos uncorrupted. And as a result, delusions of persecution just isn't worth taking. Next, if this cluster is the cradle, the pathological cluster is the baby in the cradle. This one is one of my personal favorites. So this cluster is amazing now. You have a 12% chance to get a delirium mirror in your maps. And you have a 4% chance in total, so 3% from Pathological, 1% from one of the small nodes, for any map that drops in your maps to be upgraded with at least one, but sometimes as many as five layers of Delirium. It's been my experience that when this procs, it seems to average two and a half Delirium layers. And it seems to be lower if you're playing in lower tiers, but two and a half is based upon playing in tier 16s. Now, when you're mapping at Endgame, you tend to drop three to four maps of relevant tiers per map that you run. And so this is like getting 0.3 Delirium Orbs saved per map that you run. Now you have less agency over what you can do with these Delirium Orbs, you can't sell them to other players in bulk, you can't apply them to maps of your choosing, you're forced to apply them to specific maps. But still I find that Pathological ends up being quite a good deal. The next cluster is the Paranoid Fixation cluster in the nor nor west area of the passive tree. Now 25% more cluster jewels is okay, 25% more Delirium Orbs is okay. Neither of these are anything amazing. Where Paranoid Fixation really shines is if you go out of your way to force additional unique monsters onto your maps. So Paranoid Fixation is somewhat of a build around setup. It really, really encourages you to increase the number of unique monsters on maps via things like the Rogue Exile nodes. 
So Ruckus, for example, grants your maps an 8% chance to contain 20 additional rogue exiles. That's an average of 1.6 additional unique monsters per map. But perhaps most ridiculous of all is running Paranoid Fixation in conjunction with Val Temple maps. If you're wanting to run Val Temple maps or even Val Temple maps that you change into a different tile set through the use of Twist of Fate, then you'll find that you have lots and lots of additional unique monsters on your maps. Of course your Vile Temple maps have to be delirious, and for that you have the Divination card, The Price of Prescience. This Divination card is pretty much Trade League only, but it is something that's usually pretty available. Now it's important to note with Paranoid Fixation that this node was bugged until the 2nd of February. It used to be that delirious unique monsters in your maps that dropped a Cluster Jewel because of a Paranoid Fixation proc, would drop a cluster jewel that had its item level equal to that of the tier of the map. This is not intended, it was intended that they were two levels higher, and on the 2nd of February there was a patch that fixed this, so now if you're running tier 16 maps you will get item level 85 cluster jewels from this, whereas previously you would have received item level 83 ones. There is a huge difference in cluster jewels being item level 84 plus versus being lower, and as a result this ends up being quite a lot better. Late in a trade league, item level 84 clusters are 10 chaos if they're bad and 50 chaos average. This is because even the bad ones can be fed into the 5 for 1 vendor recipe. And as a result, there is a lot of demand for these things because each of the cluster jewel sizes has at least one jackpot hit that you can get. For example, an item level 84 plus 3 passive mana reservation efficiency cluster jewel is worth many, many, many divines at the time I'm recording this in patch 3.20, and I expect that that will continue unless those change substantially in the future of the game. There is also very valuable medium and very valuable large clusters as well. The other thing that's going to sound completely ridiculous when it comes to Paranoid Fixation is that this is the use for Torment Scarabs. You've probably been wondering why these things still exist in the game. Well, Torment Scarabs still exist because Paranoid Fixation makes them worth using. If you use a polished or gilded Torment Scarab, that's going to cause a large number of additional unique monsters, i.e. these ghosts, to appear on the map. You just need to kill them before they possess anything, and then you will have killed a delirious unique monster, and you will get the procs that come from Paranoid Fixation. So yeah, quite a good cluster here, but not something that does much on its own. It's something you need to build around, and something you would need to design your strategy around as well. Finally we have the Delirium Rewards Cluster in the north. Now this has one mediocre wing on it, which has increased stack sizes of Simulacrum Splinters. This is fine, uh, it's just not anything to write home about. Simulacrums in Trade League have been becoming quite a lot cheaper lately, and that's because the Atlas is becoming so juicy that the Simulacrum struggles a bit to compete with the value that's available on just juiced mapping. As a result, there's less demand than there used to be for the Simulacrum itself, and so these additional splinters don't really do all that much for you loot-wise. If you're playing in SSF though, and you want to run the Simulacrum a lot, then you're definitely going to want to take this cluster. On the right-hand branch though, we have something a little bit more interesting. Delirium reward types in your maps gain plus one to count on map completion. So this means that when the map boss dies, you will get an additional level of all of your Delirium rewards. This is actually really, really good. Now a lot of people overthink the min-maxing on this. If you're playing a Delirium Layers strategy, then you want to kill the map boss dead last. That is going to be sufficient for Imagine Pursuits to give you the maximum number of rewards that you would get. And so this ends up working well in conjunction with maps like Mesa, where you can easily do the map boss dead last. I have run the numbers on this, it seems like it's a little bit strange that you would be fine doing it dead last, that you don't want to try and go, oh we're at 8, we might get to 9 from the rest of the map, we're not sure if we will or not, should we go and kill the boss now to guarantee 9? No, it's fine to just kill everything else on the map, see if you can reach 9 without doing so, then whether you do or not, go and kill a map boss and you will get one tier from that. The small nodes leading up to this are also very good as well granting you an additional 25% reward progress. Essentially, this branch is one of the best things on the entire tree when it comes to Delirium. It's going to basically be like Compulsive Hoarder, but better. It's going to give you a substantial boost to the amount of rewards that you get, and it's not based on an RNG proc, it's reliable, and the numbers on it are really good. So definitely take this cluster. Okay, so let's quickly discuss interactions between Delirium and some of the keystones that transform your entire atlas. Firstly, we want to talk about Grand Design, so small Atlas passive skills grant nothing, and your maps have a lot of additional pack size on them. 
So the most important thing you get from your small Atlas passives, if you're playing a Delirium strategy, is that you get a lot of additional chance for the Delirium Mirror to spawn. It is kind of okay to run Grand Design if Delirium is on the map device and you commit to always using it on every map. It's also fairly strong in conjunction with a Delirium Mirror Focus. This is not something that you should feel you have to take, but it is a viable option. And it will definitely work reasonably well if you are running a Delirium tree and you are not dependent upon a Delirium Mirror Chance. On the other side of the Atlas, we have Wandering Path. And I'm gonna say here that this is generally worse than not taking it. Some of the large nodes are really good when it comes to Delirium. This is going to increase your chance of seeing the Delirium Mirror at random, but the Delirium Mirror is going to be worse every time you get it. Ultimately, it's your choice, but I'm going to caution against using Wandering Path in most Delirium setups. If you want to do it though, feel free. It's not completely terrible, but I would say it's better to not use it than to use it. There is also Growing Hordes to consider. Now, Growing Hordes obviously doesn't work in conjunction with Paranoid Fixation and Gilded Torment Scarabs, so I wouldn't suggest doing that. But if you're not doing that strategy, Growing Hordes is a viable option as well. It will cause you to get a lot more monsters in each map, which will then enable you to get a lot more Delirium rewards. However, on the flip side, you're not going to get the normal benefits of the Scarabs that you would be using, and Delirium is very effective in conjunction with some Scarabs. Ultimately, this choice is up to you. I would say in many cases, the answer is going to be that the default purposes of those Scarabs are probably better. Anyways, that's what we have on Delirium. I'm going to leave it there. May your Valobs have interesting results and I will see you around.